Okay, so we're working on project two, type arrangements in our typography class, and this is found on pages 10, let's see, 108 and 109 of your book, but I'm going to walk us through this. And for this week, I'm going to go to class session number two, and I do have uh, the assignment. Make sure it's available here. Ooh, we're missing some fonts, so let me make sure the fonts are here. Ooh, I don't see fonts. Uh, we're using the same fonts that we used last week, but I have one new font for you, and um, I'm going to get that real quickly. So you can use the same fonts you used last week. Download the well. You don't even have to download those because you already have them uh, loaded into your font agent. But we're going to load another font. Now it's there. So if you are in week two, you may have to hit the refresh button. That's this little button up here next to the URL um, and refresh that. We have a Garamond Pro font. So you want to download Garamond Pro by right clicking on it, save it as, and then take it to your desktop or your Project 2 folder or whatever. So I'm going to create a new folder and call it Project 2 because I like staying organized. And I'm going to put it into the Project 2 folder. Now. We are going to load Garamond Pro. Now you already have Garamond, but Garamond Pro is not the same as Garamond. All fonts with the same name are not the same. Different font manufacturers, also called foundries, they create their own version, and this one has a little bit more to offer. So I have my Project 2 folder I've opened. You want to unzip Garamond Pro by double-clicking on it. And it will have a Garamond Pro folder. And it should have four different members of the family in there. A regular, an italic, a bold, and a bold italic. And we're going to load those in Font Agent. If you don't have Font Agent up, you may have to go to Applications and go find Font Agent. And then parking down at the dock. So type an F for font and you should get pretty close to it. Um, it's actually in a folder. But uh, you'll want to park that on the dock. Mine is already there. And then you want to open that. Now, we're going to create a new set. Remember, last week we created a set just for Project 1. Well, we're going to create a set for Project 2. So, while Font Agent is open, you want to go to Tools and choose the second item down, which is New Set. And we're going to name this set Project 2 Fonts. And we're going to hit Save. And now we'll see in your sets, it says My Sets up here in the upper right hand, or excuse me, left hand corner, you should have a Project 1 Fonts set, and now we have a Project 2, but there's no fonts in there yet. We're just creating a set. Now, even though we might right click on this and tell it to load that Garamond, um, it won't put it in the set. We'll have to deal with that here in just a moment. But go ahead and right click on Project 2 Fonts, and then the topmost item is Import Fonts. So we want to import fonts, and we want to go find that Garamond Pro. Now, luckily, I created a Project 2 folder, and I can find it really quickly. So when I find that Garamond Pro folder, I click on it, single click, and I hit open, and it automatically loads all four of those fonts. And it gives us a little report. You just hit OK. Now these fonts are not in the Project 2 font set yet, even though we right-clicked on Project 2 fonts and told it to import it. It didn't import them in there. So what we need to do now is it does have the most uh, recent import history. You should see all of your Garamond Pros. So you want to click on one of them and hit Command A. Command A is select all. So select all of those and then drag them over to your Project 2 font set. There we go. And you will now see if you move your cursor that there are four fonts located in the Project 2 fonts set. And we want to go ahead and activate this font set. And when you float your cursor over that set, you'll see the little pill type shape with a button. Click on the button and it will automatically move to the right and turn green. These fonts are now available in InDesign. So this is an Adobe Garamond Pro with an ST and a D at the end of it when we go into InDesign. 
Now, oh, let's go back to the font thing. This is awesome. I'm going to show you something. Yes. Say again. Well, they're already going, so I don't even have to add them. So what I'm doing, and good question. The question was, do we want to go ahead and put Baskerville and Bodoni and stuff in Project 2? I'm not going to worry about it because we're using them from Project 1, so I'm just going to keep Project 1 fonts activated and activate this new font for Project 2. But yes, normally I would put them in there. Normally I would, but I'm just being lazy. <laughs> okay, so... Um, I want to share with you something very interesting. This is really cool with Font Agent because you can kind of examine what your fonts look like. You can click, I'm like clicking on this bar right here and moving it up just so I can see a little bit more. And if I'm in Garamond Pro, which right now I, I'm going to go to Garamond Pro Regular, I can go to the player and it, what that does is it shows me what it's going to look like set in body copy. I can, I'm not going to deal with the compare thing right now, but it does show you what it looks like in a sentence. But if I go to glyphs, I can see if there are lots, lots and lots and lots of special characters, like fractions, and if I'm speaking French, and Decena, your name we can finally set properly with that wonderful accent under the sea. It's all in here. So um, we have custom, we got some nice ligatures. Alternative, alternative characters. There's all sorts of fabulous things in here. We also have what are called old style non-lining numbers. You'll notice when we see the little number one, it looks like a small uppercase I. We go to number two and it looks like it's higher than number three. Look like three looks like it's almost like a G where it's got its little descender hanging down. The four is kind of down, the six is up. Whoa, these are called non-lining numbers. These are numbers that we use in body copy because we don't want, we, it's unwanted emphasis to have regular capital, capital high numbers. I'm like, wow, those are some nice glyphs. Now let's go to Project One fonts and let's click on Garamond in there. This is a different Garamond. Now, if you were missing last week, you don't have this loaded yet. You may have to take some time to load that. The ITC Garamond is a completely different Garamond set. So I am going to find my ICT, ITC rather, Garamond with the S, the T, the D, with the BK, I believe that's book. Okay, so I clicked on ITC Garamond Standard Book. And if I move this up so I can see more of my glyphs, you will see that there's a much limited, much more limited set of glyphs. The word pro means Usually there's a lot more fantastic little tidbits of typography in there if you want to be really professional about setting typography. This one does not have the non-lining numbers. It doesn't have nearly the fun, exciting things that the other one had. However, it does have um, some of the extra characters such as, you know, the C has a thing underneath it. Um, but it doesn't have everything. Not compared to what Garamond Pro had. Not every font has every glyph. We just learned that. So I'm going to share with you, I just shared with you the difference between maybe an Adobe Garamond Pro versus an ITC Garamond that does not have a Pro at it. That means it doesn't have as much stuff to typeset with. Okay, so that was kind of cool. Our old uh, font management software, we couldn't see glyphs like this. So we can examine the font and what it looks like before we even use it, which is really nice. It, we can see what it looks like in body copy, too. It's really cool. Okay, so I'm going to close Font Agent. It's still working in the background. It didn't quit it or anything. And I am going to start this project. So we want to make sure InDesign is open. Again, if you haven't uh, worked in InDesign yet, it will be found in your Applications folder. Uh, you want to go to InDesign and then drag the InDesign icon to your dock so it'll stay there and then open it. This is a little review from last week. We already did most of that last week. So when InDesign is open, which may take a couple of minutes, my goodness, there's a caterpillar having a race around the lid of that. He's really going to town. He's running, running, running. Okay. And if you guys want to take the caterpillars out and hold them, that's fine. Just don't drop them on the floor because the long drop like that oftentimes does kill them. So you want to hold them over something that's not so high up. You guys ever played with tarantulas before? 
Oh, if you drop a tarantula, it will die because it's so fat and heavy that if you drop it from the, oh, it'll just, it won't smush anywhere. It'll just, its insides will go crazy. Oh, I'm sorry, Sarah. She doesn't like the idea of tarantulas. I won't mention tarantulas again. But uh, yeah, if you want to hold those, I'm fine with it. <laughs> Touch a miracle of nature. All right, so I'm just buying some time. So everybody has your InDesign open. Um, what we want to do is if InDesign, this window comes up, cool thing is it has letters so we can just click on that and it will uh, give us a letter document now I don't know that this is the right setup um, I'm going to have to look and see what the instructions are telling us hmm oh all sorts of different things uh, our our column widths are a, there's a variety of columns so I'm not even gonna break this into two columns like I did the last time uh, the first one is gonna be 13 pike is wide the second text box is going to be 20 pikes wide, the next one is 18, and then we have one that's 24. So I'm not even going to set up columns here. I'm just going to draw text boxes and make sure they're the right size. Okay, so now we should have the Garamond text from last week. We'll use that. We don't have to use, like for Baskerville, you don't need to use the Baskerville type. It's okay if we just keep using the Garamond text. Um, but if you uh, are missing that text, you want to go to week one, and we can steal the Garamond text that I have for project one. So the five basic tie faces, it's the very bottom item. It says Garamond text project one dot doc. So you can steal that. You can right click on it and save that to your folder if you'd like. So I'm going to save that to my project two folder, even though I have it in my project one folder. And I want to make sure that it's not zipped, which I don't think that is. Nope, it's a document. It doesn't take very much room, so I didn't zip it. All right, so make sure you have that Garamond text. And we're ready to start this. Okay, so we're going to get the type box, which is used, we're going to use a type tool for that, that T. And we're going to, we're going to click and drag a text box, okay? near the upper left hand corner and we're going to place that Garamond text by going to file and place which is command D I usually use my keyboard shortcuts but command D is place so file place and we go find I'm gonna go find my project 2 folder and I'm going to find my Garamond text it says project 1 but we're using this on project 2 as well we're recycling and I'm gonna click on that document and hit open it's going to tell me the font's missing because I don't have a, Cal a Calibri, but I'm okay. I'm going to hit close, and everything's going to come in pink. And that's okay because we're not using that font anyway. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Now, when I zoom, I typically do not just click, click, click to zoom. I think we've talked about that. I click and drag over the area that I want to zoom into. I release, and it zooms right in. Now we want to grab the type tool, make sure it's selected. If, if you have your uh, selection tool selected and not the type tool at this moment, you don't have to go get the type tool. You just double click on any type box and I'll turn to the type tool. So that's a time saver. And we're going to hit Command A to select all. And we're going to change this to Garamond. But we're going to use Garamond Pro because if we look at the example in the textbook, there's a date in there of 1561, and that date is set in old style, proportional old style. It's non-lining numbers. So for 1615, we're going to, wait, 1561? Yeah, 1561 and 1650, we're going to change those so they're non-proportional old style. So let's make sure we choose the right Garamond. Now, the cool thing is, is I can go into my font name, which is in the upper uh, left-hand corner, and if I double-click or triple-click, it'll grab the font that's already there, which right now is the missing font, Calibri. And I can start typing in Garamond, G-A-R-A. -A. And it'll start to populate all the Garamonds that I have loaded. Now, what I'm looking for is Adobe Garamond Pro Regular. And so, for me, that's the fourth one down. Yay! No more missing font. Now, guys, we can kill the two headlines, the two Garamonds. That was from Project 1, so highlight those and delete those. We don't need them now. And first let's talk about that proportional old style 
sort of uh, character uh, for the numbers. Now I'm zooming in a little bit. 1561 and 1615 currently are the same size as a capital letter. This creates unwanted emphasis in body copy. So if we, are, if we have professional grade fonts, and again, not all fonts are created equally, but this one's a pro grade font. If we want to change this to be uh, like what it is in the book, which is non-lining, there's a secret little place to go for that. So I'm selecting all of my type here, and then I'm going to the far right of the control panel. You'll see a little mark with four hashes. It's like a little box with four hashes. I click on that and you get a flyout menu. And this is, I call it the secret, I call this a Toucan Sam secret decoder menu because it's like, you guys ever eat cereal with the little, back in my day they had really cool prizes, like real toys. Don't you guys hear Cracker Jacks is not putting any toy at all in their stuff anymore? There's no surprise in Cracker Jacks anymore. Jerks. I know, I'm not gonna, I love Cracker Jack and I'm not gonna buy it ever again. Uh, but we used to get these really cool things and there was like this Toucan Sam secret decoder ring and it was really awesome. <laughs> so pardon the, the, the name, I call it, let's go to the Toucan Sam secret decoder area, but it's really the control panel menu fly out. Oh, that's boring. And so you go to the topmost item which says open type. You, you would not know where to go with this unless somebody shared this with you, it's really hard to find. You go to open type, and then you go down here to say, oh, let's do proportional old style. And when you click on that, look what happens to those beautiful numbers. They look like body copy. They are don't have that unwanted emphasis anymore. Now, again, not all fonts have these. When we're working with Baskerville and Bodoni and Century Expanded and Helvetica, they may not have those. But Garamond Pro does, so we're using that for now, and I wanted to share that with you. So make sure you're using proportional old style. Uh, and Garamond Pro so that we can get that on this. All right, so there's that bit of business. Oh, we also need to kill our hyphens, don't we? I don't have hyphens yet, but let's go to the backwards P, which is your paragraph control panel, and uncheck hyphenate. And we have a question. Emily, what's your question? Uh, I, did you load it into your fonts? Okay, and I select it all, and in my character control panel, which is the A button, I just double click whatever font that's in there. I start typing Garamond and Adobe Garamond Pro Regular. Make sure you look for the Adobe before it. Now it'll still be in the G's. This is kind of confusing uh, because it puts fonts in alphabetical order, but it puts it by the typeface name, but not by the foundry. So are you finding it? Awesome. There we go. Thank you for asking. Oh, and you know what? While I've done all this, I should save this. So I'm going to save this as Project 2, and then put your name, not mine. And put it perhaps in a folder that is a Project 2 folder, or someplace safe. We'll package it later. It'll create its own folder. So I'm saving that because I've started it, and I don't want to start it again in case we have some sort of power surge. OK. Now, it tells us in the book that this first paragraph, it says 11, I'm going to type in actually at the bottom of this paragraph, or at the top, and I want you guys to do this too. I'm going to type in uh, 11 over 15, oh, it does want us to, yeah, Garamond, oops, I can't spell, oh, now that I have those non-lining figures, it's doing a beautiful thing, Garamond. X, which is times, 13, and you can say P. You don't have to type out the word PICAS, 13P. Okay? I want you to type set that up there. Because when I'm grading, I actually put a little, in pencil, I'll put a check mark over the 11, assuming you actually set this as 11 point type. I'll put a check mark over the 15, which assumes that you did use 15 points of letting. I put a check mark over Garamond, assuming you use the Garamond font. And then I put a check mark over the 13, assuming you have done a 13 pica wide column. If it's no check mark and you see an X, that means, oops, you missed that part. And then you'll have a point or so taken away. <coughs> okay, so please typeset this information above that first paragraph. Now, let's select all this type, including the headline up there, and let's make it Garamond Pro, and let's make it 11 over 15. 
Now, I wish I could make this bigger, but I can't. But up here, there's your type size right here. It's the uh, second column, first row. Right now, by default, it looks like it was at 11. So make sure that's 11. And then the letting is right underneath it. So we want to set that to 15 points letting. Oh, 15 is not available. So we can just type the number in. So just triple click in that field. Three clicks will give you everything, including the PT. And just type in 15. Hit the tab key so it'll stick. And you'll see it'll automatically convert to 15 points. Now, it does tell us that this needs to be justified. So keyboard shortcut for justified. Shift Command J. Ooh, that's so easy. Shift Command J. If you're on a PC, it'd be Shift Control J. Yes, Emily. How do you get the numbers like that? How did I get the numbers like this? Okay, a little review on how we got pro uh, proportional old style numbers. First, select all the type, and then go to this little, I call it the Toucan Sam Secret Decoder, but it's really the flyout menu on the control panel. It's got like four little hashes. The first item is open type. And it has another flyout menu. And you want to go all the way down, four items from the bottom, and choose proportional old style. There's a little review there. And it will turn your numbers into something a little less obtrusive. Thank you for asking. OK. So we just made this 11 over 15. We just made it justified by hitting Shift-Command-J. And now we have to tell this to be a certain width the column width, the actual text box width. And in the book it says 13 picas. So we choose the selection tool, which is the black arrow tool. You can hit escape if you're using the type tool. Hit escape, it goes right to that tool. It's very nice. You don't have to go clicking on it. And then you'll notice that the control panel changes a bit up here. It doesn't have fonts available because we're in a different tool. So in the width area, it tells us that we want this to be 13 picas. So we triple click in there to get rid of whatever number is in there, and we type in a 13. Don't even type in a P, it knows. Hit the tab key, and it just made it 13 pike as wide. It just made it really skinny, didn't it? There we go. 11 over 15, 13 pike as wide. That doesn't look like anything in the book, but this is correct. The book is much wider, so they did something wrong in the book. Okay, when you have it selected with your black arrow tool, up here in the control panel, it's the second column, first row, it says a W, that's your width, you type in 13P in there and then hit the enter key, or it actually hit the tab key. If you hit the enter key, sometimes that does a, a column break and it is a real pain. W? What's what? Yeah, there's a little W right here. Assuming you have the black arrow yeah, that's your selection tool. There you go. And then type in your 13P up in there, or just 13. It understands where in Pike is right now. All right, very good. We're going to save that. Oh, you know what we should do, too, because it doesn't have you put your name on here? We need to go ahead and typeset our name on this. So go ahead and somewhere in the upper left-hand area, go ahead and type in your name. I don't care what font. You can make it as funky as you want as long as I can read it. Um, just put it kind of close to the pink line so it doesn't, when it prints, it doesn't get cut off. Okay? And I want, oh, oh, this gives me an excellent opportunity to use my keyboard shortcut. Shift, Command, R, and it'll push it to the right. Oh my gosh, those are so cool. Have it perfectly situated up there. And I'm going to save it again. Command S for save. All right, we're ready to move on to the next box of type. Now, guys, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I don't want to draw another text box and go to File and Place because and change it to you know, whatever. I'm just going to I'm just going to copy this one and I'm going to alter it. Okay? So here's the quick way to do it. Let me show you the slow way. Slow way to copy and paste. Click on it. Command C, Command V, and you have no control over where it pastes. Okay? No, nope, let's not do that. We want control. So we are using the black arrow tool, known as the selection tool. Click on the box one time, not twice, because it'll turn into your type tool. Hold down the Option or Alt key and drag it over to where you want it, right about there. That is a fabulous copy and paste move, isn't it? Alt drag is what we oftentimes call it. Uh, so you have to have the black arrow tool selected, though, to be able to do that. 
Now I'm going to zoom into this one. Do, 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 do. And I'm going to type at the top something a little different because it wants, in the book, it tells us this is different. So I'm going to type all new stuff up here. This one is supposed to be flush left right right, but it's going to be 11 over 13. Let me get that moved back down there. 11 over 13, Baskerville. By the way, uh, don't call it Bastardville. I've had students call this font Bastardville. It is not called Bastardville. It's called Baskerville. And we want to make that 20 picas wide. So 11 over 13, Baskerville times 20 pica. Just That means 20 pica wide box. OK, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. And I'm going to select all of that type that's in that box. That's just a command A for select all. And I want to choose Baskerville. So double click, or actually I use like triple clicking up in that little text field that says Adobe Garamond Pro right now. Triple click in there and start typing in Baskerville. Now, not all Baskervilles are created equally. We have a few different ones from different manufacturers. But you guys know that you want the one with the S, the T, and the D. And we don't want bold, and we don't want incline, which is italic. So we just want regular old upright for now. There might be an italic somewhere in there. We'll have to check out later. So we just made that Baskerville. And we want it 11 over 13. Right now, it's 11 over 15. So. We want it 11 over 13. So we've got to change the letting to 13. We just double click in there and type in 13. OK? And it says this is supposed to be 20 picas wide, this column or text box. So you want to make sure you're on the black arrow tool, known as the selection tool. And you want to, in the width field, type in 20. And then hit the tab key, and it'll stick. It makes it quite a bit wider for me. You know what, when I, in looking at the examples in the book, it does show that um, the last sentence in these statements are italicized. So let's, we, we got to pay attention to details. I'm going to zoom into the first text box, which is set in Garamond. And this will be a click and a drag. Because if I click three times, I only get one line. If I click four times, it gets the whole paragraph. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to click and drag on the last statement and make sure you're at the end and make that Adobe Garamon Pro italic. Now the cool thing is, is you just go where it says regular, that's your style, it's underneath the type name, you just choose italic. Okay? Same thing with the one set in Baskerville. God bless you. Thank you. You're welcome. We're going to grab the last sentence in the one that we've set in Baskerville and instead of Baskerville upright, so where it says upright, we want to choose incline, which incline means also italic. You know, we've got Roman, regular, upright, book, you know, all those mean normal. And then we have incline and italic. That all means italics. It's kind of confusing, but people like to be fancy and different. Okay, so this one, again, was set in 11 over 13 Baskerville. Let me make sure I've got that. 11 over 13 Baskerville. And the reason why when I select all, this is blank is because I have some italic and some upright. So when you get this blank, it means you have mixed styles. That's okay. And it's 20 picas wide. Now, um, let's do a little review. Remember last week I had mentioned that your text boxes, the bounding boxes, need to kind of be close to the edges of the text. And you notice that mine has a big whopping lots of white space at the bottom, and it's got a little bit here too. What can I do to quickly close that white space up and get that box to be more bound to the type? Yeah, double click on this little middle anchor point. Bang! There, it did it perfectly. And I come over to the one that's set in Garamond, I do the same thing. Bang! Done. So quick, so nice. Love it. And I'm going to save it. I hear things, don't you guys? Somebody's messing around. I don't think we have any. Let's, let's double check. We don't have any tornado warnings, do we? <laughs> you guys have smartphones that have all that stuff on there, don't you? Let's double check. I know this is just a quick break. I don't see anything here. No, we're. I think we're okay. No, we're fine. Okay. 
they're doing some sort of noise out there somewhere. Okay. Oh, I know what it is. It's Mark, our electronics guy. He has these LED lights, and he has this thing in his lot in his office that when that noise goes, the lights do all sorts of things. So he's probably with an electronics student right now. So we'll shut the door because that's very annoying. Exactly what that is. All right, sorry for that interruption. All right, we're ready to move on to the next batch of text. Um, we're going to copy, I don't care if it's the Baskerville set one or the Garamond set one, we're going to copy one of those by alt dragging it down to the near the bottom, but not quite. And this one, we are going to zoom in. And I am going to type in the right numbers up here. Oh, you'll notice in Baskerville it doesn't have the non-lining old, the non-lining proportional old style stuff. It's not a pro font, so we're going to have to live with this, folks. Now that you have, now that you're type snobs, and I've shown you the snobbery of this fabulous old style non-lining proportional character here. That's beautiful, isn't it? Now we're like, ew, Baskerville, come on, get with the program. These are so not right. All right, but this one, this third one, it's going to be set in uh, 12 over 16 Bodoni, 12 over 16, so type that in, Bodoni. And it's not Bodini, folks. It's not B-O-D-I-N-I. -I. That's Bodoni's cousin, the magician. Uh, it's Bodoni, Gian Battista Bodoni. So make sure you have Bodoni. And this will be 18 haikas. You might want to go ahead and pull your text box down just a little bit, just in case Bodoni is bigger and it doesn't uh, conform to that box very well. Okay, so we're going to select all. So double click in there if you're in your black arrow tool, so it'll turn into the type tool. Select all of that, and we're going to make this Bodoni, but make sure it's the Bodoni that I've given to you. So we're back here in the character control panel, upper left-hand corner. Triple click so you can get rid of Baskerville Cyrillic and start typing in Bodoni. B-O-D-O. -O. Oh my gosh, look at all the Bodonis. There's Bodoni 72, book, and old style. And then there's, oh, there's the STD one. That's the one we want. And for this one, we want the poster. Or not the poster. Oh, that's horrible. We want book. Oh, look at poster. It's crazy. Wah! Ah! So we don't want poster. That's bad for body copy. Nobody wants to read that. We want regular old book. Or Roman. Let's try Roman. Yeah, there we go. Roman's good. Roman or Brooke will work. Now, it says here that this is supposed to be flush right, ragged left. What's keyboard shortcut? Command shift R. Oh, that's so nice. It did it all by itself. Now, if you can't remember that, they're all up here uh, on your control panel. Contr command shift R. On a PC, it would be Control Shift R, and we know it's supposed to be 12 over 16, so we can now specify the point size and the letting. Oh, 16's not in there. Oh, it says yeah, 16. So I have to type in the number again. Triple click, type in 16, hit the Tab key, it sticks. Oh, we can see that some of it's missing. I'm I'm clicking on my black arrow tool. And you see there's a little, for me, there's a little red plus sign there. Don't click on it. It'll load your cursor and want you to put that text somewhere else. Uh, instead, just click on down, pull that little window shade guy down, and get the deck, rest of the text in there. Okay. Double click in there. Make sure the last sentence is Bedoni with the S, T, and the D, and make it italic. Oh, that was so much work. I hit Command S to save it. Oh, and let's tighten this box up by double-clicking in the center node so it pops up in there. 18 pikas. Uh, 18 pikas. Oh, I almost forgot about that. Thank you, Miss, Miss T. Make sure this is 18 pikas wide. So click on that box with the black arrow tool and in the width make it 18p. I almost lost a point because I almost forgot about that. Oh, darn it. Now my text box is too short. So just pull it down, then double-click on the center so it'll go back to where it needs to go. Exciting stuff. The last one's going to be um, centered, and it's going to be century expanded. So we are going to drag, alt drag, or option drag the last box over. We're going to zoom into that.
and we're going to get the type tool and make sure that we select this 12 over 16 but only stuff and we're going to type in 10 over 16 century expanded times 24 P make sure it's on its own line so it's 10 over 16 century expanded by 24 pi because it's going to be the box width So let's select all that text and make sure that this is actually Century Expander. Right now it's Bodoni. So triple click inside of the name of the font, which is Bodoni and the S, T, and the D, and start typing in Century. And ooh, look at that. Century Expanded is right there. But why do I only have italic? And, oh, there we go. I got Roman. That's good. Didn't see my Roman. And what font size is this? This is supposed to be 10 over 16. So make sure you do 10 over 16. It's got the same lighting as what we had before. And it's 24 picas wide. But before I do that, this is centered. What's the keyboard shortcut for centered? Shift command, Shift command C. There we go, finally it's going. And then we want this to be 24 picas wide. So use your black arrow tool when you're dealing with the box width and set this at 24. Oh my goodness, that got pretty wide. You may have to move some things around to accommodate. There we go, that looks much better. And your last line on this also needs to be italic, so make sure you uh, grab that last sentence of, not last line, but last sentence, and make sure that that century expanded italic. And I just saved it because I'm like, I don't want to have to do this over again, so I'm saving it. I'm going to make this kind of pretty. I'm going to kind of line these up. Oh, it looks like Mondrian type artwork. Mm -hmm. What's that? I hit the W, assuming I'm not in a type box with a text tool. If you're in a type box with a text tool and you hit the W, it's going to type a W. So hit the escape key and then hit the W, and you can get your print preview. What you see is what you get. What you see is what you get when you print. W on, off. So hit the W a couple times, it turns it back on. One has your uh, non-printing objects and one has the printable objects. Nice. So we're going to save that. See, that part's easy, wasn't it? You guys could, you guys could like, knock this out if I didn't do this demo. And you're like, hey, you know what? Your computer locks up and everything went to hell in a handbasket. You guys could redo this and no problem, right? No problem at all. So let's save that. You know what I'm going to do, too? I'm going to double check my work. Because, say what? Yeah. Uh, Baskerville, oh, oops, did I screw something up? Oh, whoops, what did I do? Hold on, let's, let's double check my work. Because I, oh, I got it justified. That's why we should double check our work. I was getting ready to double, double check because I don't want to earn any fewer points, you know, I want the full points. So I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to start with Garamon and I'm going to double check my work. Okay, this is 11 over 15 at 13 pike as Garamon. So I've got to select all. I'm like, oh, the, go W Garamon Pro. It's got the STD. It's 11 over 15. It's justified because it told me in the book that this is supposed to be justified. Okay, everything looks good there. Now, Baskerville is supposed to be flush left, rag right. Oh, no, it's justified. Look, it's got no rags. Shift Command L. Mmm, there we go. That's right. And it is 11 over 13. I got Baskerville, and it's supposed to be 20 picas wide. I've got a little extra text in there that's missing now. There we go. 20 picas wide. All right, I'm glad I'm double-checking my work because I would have missed a point or two for that. I'm going to save it, too. Now I'm going to go and get my Bodoni, and I'm going to look at it. Bodoni is supposed to be 18 picas wide, and it is supposed to be set at 12 over 16, which it is. And I'm using Bodoni S, T, and D. I'm good. And it is flush left and, oh, excuse me, no, flush right, ragged left. That's what the book tells me. Okay, this one's correct. And then the very last one, Century Expanded. 
I've got the right font. It's 10 over 16. The book says 10 over 16. It's supposed to be centered. It is centered. And the column width or text box width is 24 picas. And that is correct because that's what the book says. I am so glad I double checked my work. That few seconds it took to do that saved me maybe some points. I don't want bad grades for something this simple. So I'm going to save that. Now, let's go ahead and package this while we're here because you're going to have to turn a package file anyway. This is assuming you're done. So I'm going to go ahead and package this. So I would go to File and Package. This is four items up from the bottom. If you're not done, wait to package till you're done or till you're ready to run it home. File, Package. I have no explanation points, which means I have no problems. So I hit the package. I hit Continue on these instructions. I don't do anything there. And I am going to put this in my Project 2 folder and hit Package. It's telling me fonts are copyright protected. I say OK. And it's pulling together all the fonts I used. And the, it's giving me an IDML file, the INDD file, a PDF. It's, it's doing a fabulous job. And I'm going to save that. And I always double check. I go to my Project 2 folder, move it up here. Project 2 folder, and I'm looking to see what my package folder, it always has the word folder at the end. I always investigate. It's got all my fonts, yay! It's got my IDML file, it's got my INDD file, and it's got a PDF. And I typically open these to make sure they work, you know, because you don't want any surprises. Here's my IDML file, it looks just like my INDD file, okay? All right. Now, if you wanted to turn that in right now, you can zip it and turn it in, but we're not done. We have another one, but you, it's going to be a two-part thing. Um, so don't, no, no, don't zip it and turn it in because you're going to have a second one that goes in here. So just hold off on zipping, okay? But we did package. Don't zip and turn in yet, okay? Do not zip. Okay, we have been about an hour uh, before we had our last break. So let's take another break. Let's do about 15 minutes. That means come back at about 10 after 3. I'm going to stop this video. And then we're going to pick up on the Helvetica portion of this, which is quite different. So um, 